Hello, Mrs. Borry again here for part two of our wonderful story. Do you remember what it was called? Leon and the Place Between. Have you already listened to part one? If not, go back and have a look there because it's a really exciting story. Can you remember the part we got to? Can you remember the character? Here he was. Abdul Kazam had just appeared on the stage and Leon, the little boy, was very excited. He could smell the magic. Trust nothing, said Abdul Kazam, but believe everything. He threw his arms into the air and the magic began. Paper flowers blossomed from his sleeves. Silk scarves changed colour at a whispered word. Water poured into a hat. It turned into the night air. Bright white handkerchiefs became fluttering doves. The crowd was amazed. Then Abdul Kazam stepped aside and there was a door. A door into a box. Who will step into the magic? Leon knew it had to be him. He stepped up onto the stage and climbed into the box. There was a gasp from little Mo and the door shut behind him. And Nat's trying to join into our story. Oh, there he is, there's the box. He's going to climb in. Oh, what's happened? He's climbed in and now he's falling, falling. Where is Leon going? There is he. Inside, the box was not a box. It was a world of doorways to somewhere else. Leon fell down, 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 until he tumbled onto a carpet. Hello, said a boy in blue pantaloon trousers. This is the place in between. Between what? Between there and back again. This is the place where magic sends you. There he is. And then the little boy. Will you show me? So asked Leon. The boy smiled. Hold on tight. He gave the carpet a tug. With a swoop, off they flew. Everything that disappeared by magic appeared in the place between. Cards and doves fl fluttered in the lantern light. Coins and rings spun past, flashed and were gone. Ropes, cups, and balls danced in the perfumed air. A magician's assistant stepped out of nowhere as another vanished in the blink of an eye. It was a world of astonishment, a world of the unexpected. It was alive with magic. The carpet came to rest. Do you live here? asked Leon, his eyes huge with wonder. No, said the boy, but my father is a great magician. He makes me disappear every night. If I help him, he will teach me magic. Then Leon felt something soft wriggling behind him. A white rabbit climbed gently onto Leon's lap and nestled in his arms. The boy stroked her ears. She is always here, he said sadly. She was never called back. There she is little soft white rabbit. He's still holding her. Leon hugged the lonely rabbit and gazed around the place between, enchanted and amazed. Suddenly, the boy began to float away. My father is calling, he said. It is time to go. Leon waved. Goodbye, he cried. I'll never forget. Then, from far away, he heard an echo of his own name. Leon, come back to us. Leon, return. Leon felt the magic lift him off the ground and back into darkness. Oh, there he goes. Flying back through, we have the moon. Can you see Leon? And then, I wonder if you can see anything on Leon's back. I wonder. I wonder what it could be. Leon heard a sharp tap. The door of the box opened before him. 
Leon stepped out with the white rabbit still in his arms. Here she is. Abdul Kazam took a majestic bow. The crowd cheered and clapped. Tom and little Mo clapped loudest of all. Did you really disappear? asked Pete as they shuffled out into the night. Of course he did, said Tom. See, this is a magic rabbit. He stroked her long, soft ears. But where did you go? asked little Mo. Leon smiled. I went to the place that magic takes you. Can anyone go there? sighed little Mo with a yawn. Leon lifted her up onto his shoulders. Yes, anyone, Mo, he said. Anyone who believes. And off they went home. Do you believe? Take care, stay safe.